Okay, I was trying to go live with uh, the friends at ZN Consulting um, a couple of minutes ago uh, to talk about IGTV because I think it's going to be absolutely huge and it's going to be one of those things that uh, you know is going to be ignored for some time. And, um, and basically, uh, people will catch up with a big delay. So I'm just going to share this live with my friend Philip from Zidane Consulting. Hey, Philip, how's it going? So let me see if I can invite you now. Okay, so Philip is watching this live. Let me check. There you go. And there you go. I can add you. So Philip is tuning in. Is connecting. Oh. There we go. <laughs> the miracles of, of technology. Hello. No, but, but you know, like, uh, um, I even read in, the, in uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's later book, latest yeah. book, that uh, you have to document your failures. So there is no shame in trying yeah. things. We've done that today. As long as you, do, <laughs> as long as you document them. And yeah. actually, this becomes content. So, you know, uh, it's weird that the, we couldn't do it on your page. But we, we found a quick fix. Hey, so, it was a test, so. Yeah. So how's it going over there? Where are, where very are well, you? Very well. So uh, good to be uh, talking to an EU influencer. Here's the beautiful logo and our cool hashtag. Actually, it's back to front. You probably can read it this way. So, but but what, what should I do to get one of those uh, 3D, 3D things? What should I, what should, how, much, how much money, how much promo should I Thousands give? Thousands of that? euros, not to mention the... <laughs> I'm the broke. Other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you wanted to talk about IGTV. So. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk about the IGTV because um, you know it came out a, a couple of days ago. I mean, it yeah. came out four days ago, and then it's been rolled out pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So something that surprised surprised me is that usually these products take a lot of time to to get rolled out, but this time, in a matter of a couple of days, everybody already had it. Yeah. And I think it is, I mean, I think it's going to be a big splash, which coincidentally, it's with uh, Instagram reaching 1 billion active users worldwide. Yeah. So there's a, a couple of elements that uh, also I wanted to confront with you and see if you agree on uh, why I think this will be really big. It can be as big as Facebook Live two years ago. Yeah. So, do you want me to give an introduction? Do you think your audience is already... Actually, this is my page, so yeah, maybe it's my... Page, so, uh, next time, we'll... I don't know if we can reshare this from your page to our page, but let, let's... Yeah, yeah, share totally. Like it. Totally, but, you uh, can. No, totally, actually, you can. Tell me something. So, we found out about the IGTV launch, yeah. same time as everybody else. We actually put out our first video on IGTV uh, just on Friday. We actually re-edited one of our videos, and I recognize a couple of people putting out their first video. Did you put out a video on, on IGTV? Uh, not well, yet. You're going to do it I, uh, I will do it shortly for, uh, for my employer. Because, okay. uh, well, because if I, if I preach about it, I have to do it. But I haven't done it yet. Yeah, so I think, I mean, my, my feeling is that as with all things on the internet, you cannot predict how things are going to unfold. But there's a very interesting potential. I think if you see the amount of videos generated by... Instagram, this opens up a new door since it's much longer and it really reaches out to the creators who want to be able to embrace Instagram. So I think it has a lot of potential. And the question is, what's the adoption curve going to be? But I've already seen a lot of people, especially in Brussels, using Instagram. So this is really a natural extension. And if you want to get to a younger demographic, it's clearly the place to be. But at the same time, what we see is very quickly... Uh, these so-called younger channels become quite mainstream. So what, what do you think? Uh, you, you touched exactly the right point. You know, um, about a year ago, Mark Zuckerberg published a post about the vision of Facebook in the world and the role that Facebook ha will have in this world in 10 years' time. Mm -hmm. And this is where he made the change to lower down the reach of brands and pages. Mm -hmm and try to bring Facebook back to the original model to connect you with people you actually know, whether yeah. they're, they are your friends and family and so on. This model basically shifted away Generation Z, so people between 30, the age of 13 and 22, mm -hmm. who 
demographically went on Instagram. So what is happening is that Facebook is going back to the original model, getting closer to your friends and people you actually know, yeah. while Instagram is going to the business model, is, is getting out, is getting, is reaching out to businesses in order to increase the visibility of brands. And by brands, I mean both products, people, politicians, uh, institutions, to that part of demographic that is moving away from Facebook. So I, I think the intelligence of Zuckerberg is to really see how curves evolve and adapt to them is not passive. And I think that, uh, I don't know, but in one year time, we will have to see something big on WhatsApp. So Zuckerberg owns Facebook, he owns Instagram, he owns Messenger. Something big is going to happen on WhatsApp before Telegram, their biggest competitor now. Um, we will do something on that market. Now, something interesting again on this very update is that Instagram broke its original business model going from uh, uh, images and short videos that will die after 24 hours. Now you can actually uh, put on videos of great quality and of longer duration, up to 60 minutes for brands. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I, I, I think it should not be ignored for businesses, for brands, for politics. I think, I think that brands that have already invested in Instagram stories um, and, ga and gave to this a personal touch will have a massive increase against the competitors who haven't done it yet. Yeah. No, I, I think, I mean, again, you know, the, this is a new channel and it links up, of course, to Instagram. It is connected to Facebook in a, in a different way. It's kind of a disruptive innovation where uh, Zuckerberg is looking at multiple channels to see if, if an audience goes from one to the other. What I saw with my students, I do a digital marketing class, is that they were really seeing, you know, Twitter, they didn't really understand. Facebook, they felt was like a adult, old people's channel. Instagram and Snapchat was where they spend most of their time. Now, again, we're going to see uh, Instagram... Uh, unfortunately, we just crashed the, the previous live. I think we were sharing too much knowledge and the platform just couldn't hold it. I'm going to see if I can reconnect with Phil. I'm going to send him a text uh, straight away. Uh, I'm going to sec. I'm going to see if I can reconnect with him. So we were talking about IGTV and I thought it was a great conversation. Maybe the uh, the bandwidth wasn't good enough for two um for two connections at once um there he is hey if you're sorry about that we crashed but uh let's keep it going oh. hey Phil. you know i think we were sharing too much knowledge we were sharing too much knowledge and uh, like the, the system exploded. just it just crashed yeah, yeah, you were so, saying that uh, you were teaching a digital uh, marketing yeah. class and you noticed that uh, generation, what they call Generation Z yeah. uh, were more on, you know, they were thinking that Facebook is, to, is not for them. Yeah. So what, 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 what and, and then I interrupted you, what, what happened there? Yeah, so I think the thing is that, you know, they consider Facebook more of an old people's uh, playground and for them it's more Instagram and Snapchat and, and I think what's up for, for different reasons. Yeah. The thing about this environment is that it really keeps shifting uh, by a few percentage points or much more. Um, so I think the answer is that we simply cannot predict the pace at which these, whatever channel you're using is going to uh, become increasingly significant. And that means that you just have to be connected to all of them and try to organize yourself so that it's okay to push a piece of content across the different channels focus on one or two as your pillar content, as, as Gary you, me would say, but then you have to be uh, looking at data, looking at engagement, looking at what happens and learn from that. So I think, you know, more than ever, we're in the trial and error space. Um, by the way, I, I think we should check when IGTV is going to have a live function so we can try this and hopefully it won't crash. <laughs> It'll be vertical, so it'll be interesting. Um, but uh, basically, I, so I think it just confirms how important it is to learn, to adapt, to change, and to accept that trial and error is going to be part of your everyday job 
that everything can crash as it did in this slide, that nothing works exactly as it should, but things can have a lot more impact than you think if you do it right. So those are my thoughts for, for this. You know, about this, I mean, uh, you, you, you mentioned the, the vertical part, and exactly so, this feature accommodates the mm -hmm. fact that most people are shooting videos like yeah. this and not like this. So, so Zuckerberg actually went, the, he saw this trend and accommodated it, and that's also the way you should act with your audience. If, uh, if your audience is shifting away, in my opinion, whether you're a politician, you are a big brand or an athlete, you have to go where where they go. Yeah. Um, they, they will not adjust to you. They, there is so much information and so many other brands they're following. They will, I mean, their loyalty cannot be just for one person considering how many feeds we scroll through in one day. Then the big question is, uh, is this feature going to steal users from YouTube, from Twitch, from Snapchat? I have some thoughts about it. Yeah. Uh, Personally, I don't think it's going to steal users from YouTube. Firstly, I mean, you know, like uh, platforms are not votes, you know. You can give one vote in an election, but you can be on YouTube, you can be on Instagram, you can be on Twitter. That's mm -hmm. completely up to the individuals and to the, and to the, and to the, the community you are, you are addressing. But the, uh, if you go on YouTube, you go to look for a video most of the mm -hmm. time. It is a repository. So let's say most people, you know, we always talk about the Europe bubble, but most people, even in Brussels, now are looking at World Cup highlights. So they mm -hmm. go on YouTube and they type uh, Germany versus Sweden highlights, okay? You cannot do that on Instagram. On, Inst on Instagram TV, firstly, you have an automatic playing function, which I think will help YouTube maintain its business model. Like you wouldn't really search for specific content on IGTV for the time being. Mm -hmm. And this is the unique selling point of YouTube, a massive repository of videos of good quality. Mm -hmm. On IGTV, I think at the beginning, a lot of brands and people and the figures will just go uh, and publish stuff the way it is. And that's the way it should be. But more and more, the audience will be demanding and they will expect perfect videos between now and the next three to six months this is my prediction yeah so i think that you know what you said at the beginning is it's all about change and that's how we you know the, the company like i mean zn stands for zeitgeist net which is the spirit of the times and it's about the importance of constantly recognizing change and following the audience where they're going in terms of the split between youtube i mean i think youtube has a very important role to play in, and it's staying there in the background. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the, um, the, the, the vertical format works because it's true mm. that that's how we consume video nowadays and YouTube doesn't really connect directly to that. So this could really be much more effective mobile platform. But my feeling is that, you know, kind of the different platforms kind of readjust and maybe become more specific for certain different kinds of needs. And who knows? I mean, YouTube could also come up with its own vertical format six months down the line or, or, or earlier. So I don't, you know, nothing is fixed in this environment, but it's clear, I think, that uh, IGTV is going to be very interesting and we're going to be playing with it. And hopefully we'll see what we can do. So um, we'll, we'll be seeing you more on uh, IGTV, I guess. Maybe, maybe. I mean, my, my community on Instagram is a, is a bit different. I focus on my second life, which is uh, the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. So I, I made the decision to, to divide my platforms according to the community I'm addressing. Is that something you would recommend to brands? Because, you know, sometimes you have brands that yeah. have, that they sell different products. And when I mean they sell different products, I mean they produce different type of content. Yeah. So let, let's say, you know, uh, is, is that something you would recommend? Like... Uh, if you are a company or a person or an athlete, mm -hmm. would you provide, would you uh, send the same content in every platform? Or you would say, okay, what I'm saying uh, on Instagram is more interesting to people interested in, in dieting. Yeah. While what I'm saying on Facebook is more interesting for people saying, uh, people talking about communication and politics and so on. Mm -hmm. So is that something you would recommend? Uh, and also how would you, 
do that for a political figure? Like, would you divide that? Uh, yeah. Or would you stick more or less to a solid format that can be reused across platforms? Yeah, so I think in theory, you want to split, you know, according to audiences and like stuff like that. So I think it, it makes a lot of sense. In practice, you need to be a lot more flexible. Uh, you know, we do our Facebook Live on, on Facebook, of course. We're putting more informal content. We experiment more on Instagram because we have less of a client audience. And then I've done these hyperthinking minutes on LinkedIn, which is more like practical advice that you know feels more businessy. But to be honest, and on Twitter we put um, you know a different kind of content, more of a image quiz, things like that. Now the thing is that I don't think you should be too dogmatic, and I don't think you should think, oh yeah, I can only put this stuff on Twitter and only this stuff on on Instagram. I think you 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 have to go out with a, with an idea, and then you have to adapt to the data and to the interaction you get. So I wouldn't be, you know, I, I think the theory is great, uh, but the practice, to be honest, I see a lot more EU stuff being published on Instagram nowadays. You know, a lot of, uh, and, it, and it's, I don't think it's that different from what you could see on Facebook stories. And I don't, I think maybe, you know, pushing stuff, st more fun stuff on LinkedIn might actually get people to say, you know what, I don't really have to see only boring uh, work content on LinkedIn. So I would say, again, it's about trial and error. You go in with assumptions and then you cor course correct as you go along. And is that the approach also you take with your clients? Like usually, you know, it's, um, it's very hard, I think, to, to make uh, employers and clients aware that they're with such change in communication, there needs to be always a trial and error period. Mm -hmm. The last question I want to ask you is, is also because of my personal interest is, how do you go about it? How do you go about saying, hey, we are going to try this. We don't know if it's going to pay off, but yeah. we need to be ahead of the curve. How do you ease people into this line of thinking? Well, I mean, that's fundamentally about mindset. And this is a thing that, you know, I think, I, I think this will make the difference between success and failure in the next election. But it's basically about being, recognizing that fact being open to change and being open to experimentations. I think the, you know, the, the, the organizations that are too hierarchical and too kind of command and control will simply struggle because they won't have the time. They won't be able to try new things because of course with new things, you don't know when they're going to work. So you just have to get comfortable with trial and error. And I mean, we've just seen today, you know, we yeah, exactly. set exactly. up the thing. It doesn't work. This is always like this. And even, whatever your level of competence, yeah. the internet, you can have multiple uh, places where things, multiple points of failure, but it's okay because the cost of failure is actually relatively low. You just try again. And then eventually you get there as long as you're comfortable with this. So for me, it's being comfortable with failure being open to changing. And it's what I call hyperthinking. It's actually this mindset that allows people to be much more open to innovation, change, and trial and error. So okay. that would be my, my suggestion, become a hyperthinker. So since, it, so, so since the, eventually we did this on my page instead of yes, Zadan, yeah, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you the opportunity to um, you know, promote one of your latest or upcoming projects that then I will add to the description. What are you working on? What do you think people should know about uh, the work of your company right now? Well, we're working on multiple campaigns. Actually, tomorrow I'm speaking on vaccines and fake news, uh, well, which is a big issue. So how, as a healthcare professional, why everybody in healthcare who cares about uh, you know, health should be a communicator and should work much harder on looking at good content, spreading that content. That was my hyperthinking minute. Um, a political project we're very excited about is Discover EU, something that we've been working on to promote. We think it's a fantastic project for all. Is this a free interrail pass uh, That's correct. Yeah. if you turn 18, right? That's right. That's oh, just that's been fantastic. launched. And what I love about this project is that it's simple, it's clear, it's real, and it matters. Because when you travel, I think people who watch this know this, when you travel, you get to experience Europe and you get to understand that meeting people, not having to go through uh, borders every time is what Europe is about. And so I think this is a very simple, but very powerful idea. And I'm, I'm very happy to see that it's taking up, you know, it's becoming a big uh, commission project now. So, um, okay. Philip, so, I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for trying this. Let's do it again, maybe in a few weeks time. No problem. Have a great okay. day. See you, bye.
Take care. Bye-bye.